6,585 pounds, Freedom Express 292 bunkhouse here at Haylet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. We have Asdell under the skin, a full-size outside kitchen, private bunkhouse, extra tall interior, and extra long residential size queen bed, and a partridge, and a pear tree. She is a lightweight, but larger series of very nicely equipped travel trailer. Now both the 292 and the 310 Freedom Express have one thing in common. You can get to most of the kitchen with the slide closed, but to get back to the bathroom and to get back to the bunkhouse, you will need to open her up. If you watch uh, this channel regularly, if you tune into a lot of our videos, then you know I am a pretty big fan of Freedom Express RVs, and it's not for any one particular reason, it's for a bunch of little reasons, and as a person who actually goes camping, looking at these and seeing where you can tell how they were designed and really strategized by another person that actually goes camping, not just you know, an engineer in a drafting room or something. And, and it doesn't mean that that couldn't be a good RV. It just means that this has a little more personal use experience poured into it. Um, it uh, one of my favorite features of it is the taller interior. Um, a normal travel trailer has a six and a half foot wall. Some of them may have a vaulted ceiling, which does give you that bigger open feel. And it might make the shower more big person friendly. But this has a three inch taller, six foot nine wall, kind of like a Jayco J flight. Um, and really, if you look at it in a lot of ways, the Freedom Express has really become like the J flight ultralight, which is odd because they come from different companies. They're not related whatsoever, but they share a lot of really similar qualities. And I don't think it's an accident that they both perform really well and are really well appreciated by customers. So a taller ceiling, or pardon me, taller sidewall versus a vaulted ceiling. That'll give us a taller slide out. That'll give us bigger cabinets, taller shower, taller bunks, stuff that means something on a day-to-day -day use basis. And that's really where these guys are some of the very best, our day-to-day -day use features. Now, they still have uh, a lot of sizzle, especially here in the Liberty Edition, which is like the, the jazzed up fun package with the uh, like LED accents under those dinette bench drawers that we'll look at in a minute. You'll see little accent lights uh, like uh, under the sleeper sofa, up there above the sleeper sofa, over here above the entertainment. You have uh, extra little uh, you know night lighting where you want it, which is, uh, again, very handy in the evening. But not just for sleeping and navigating at night. But if you're just watching a movie or something, it's really useful to have just a dull light in here, not a hard, bright light bat blasting you in the eyes, you know? Now you can see we've got windows all over that slide out. Tons of light. More light, more sights, more breeze. That's what that's going to give you right there. That never seems to bother anybody. They do, again, the little daily use things, like including little cup holders in their sofa right there. Little stuff like that. All those little things add up for me. All LED lighting, and frankly, guys, I mean, they're using a, if I can get this panel open here, a very nice lighting package in here, and you can see how they have double the lighting of some trailers that maybe just have a single row of lighting down the middle. Now, one of the things I want to mention here, because it's not a standard piece of equipment, but we will typically upgrade the uh, air conditioner in all of our Freedom Expresses, uh, with no intended exception at least, to a larger 15,000 BTU air. It'll recycle the air 50% more often in the RV to give you that extra cooling power. And my big thing is, I don't think you're ever going to regret the extra cooling power, but I think you could certainly regret not having extra cooling power. Now over here in the Liberty Edition, we are going to get in a larger eight cubic foot refrigerator freezer instead of the standard six that you'd find in the Freedom Ultralight 292 versus the Liberty 292, with the Liberty being the bigger, again, uh, more heavily equipped edition. Now remember, taller ceiling, that means taller cabinets. Um, Freedom Express gives you the option. They don't force you to have a shelf in there, so if you've got some really tall stuff, you can. But it's it's absolutely nothing to put a little shelf organizer in there. And notice how they keep the uh, control panel kind of hidden away from the grandkid or the young children hands. Um, something that my grandfather would have benefited from when I was younger. Now, these are all hardwood cabinet door frames with a, uh, a pocket screw style holding everything together. Better, stronger, longer. Uh, at the time of this filming, uh, this is kind of the indicator of what generation we're in, because this is 
us a new um, microwave and vent hood combo with a new backsplash back there. And I like how they use the same backsplash in the outside kitchen. Now, at a glance, you look at this and you think that there's the same amount of countertop prep, uh, prep space here as you'd find in almost any trailer. And remember that there is that flush mount stove cover I popped out so you could get a look at the sink. We'll talk about that in a minute. But you have to remember to look at things in three dimensions. And if you look over at it this way, you see how much open space is behind the stove top. That is awesome appliance space, uh, just general use space. So this, uh, even though it's not a longer kitchen, actually does have more square foot of prep space because they went with a deeper countertop. Now the Liberty Edition upgrades that sink hardware to that pull-out sprayer faucet. We've got a stone cast farm sink, which is the big open basin single sink American sourced uh, you know, fixture right there, rated for up to 500 degrees. Now wrapping around the sink basin is this sweetheart, the utensil drawer, the utensil drawer. And it is the best use of space under a sink. Um, we've had a lot of updated Freedom Expresses coming in lately. If you're a regular subscriber, you're sick to death of me talking about this, but chances are there's other people who haven't seen this yet before, so I want to make sure to point that out. Now what's cool is this little insert here can actually be removed. So if you want to take the insert over to the table to set out the, the silverware for dining and stuff, you can do that. Now in addition to those little LED accents like up, uh, you know, under, around the sofa, you've also got little like nightlight knobs on the stove right there, and you notice that all of our drawers are plywood boxed. Now, if we get down a little bit, you can see, again, extra deep countertop means extra deep cabinets right there. Uh, because if there's one thing Coachman does well, it is storage. Speaking of which, if we flip ourselves around here, in the Liberty Edition, instead of just cabinet doors on the end of the U-Dinette, you actually get full extension, full glide drawers. And that just, if someone's sitting at the table, it makes it so easy to get to that storage. Now, you might note um, how the TV is completely free-floating on that elliptical base. You can get it up out of the way. If you want to, you can set it over in front of the sofa, use it for like a little movie night or game night or whatever. Kind of works for you. But not only do they give you storage to the bench ends, in a Freedom Express, they do this one extra little thing. And it's this stuff that makes me look at this and go, God, you guys, you get it. You are people who camp and you get it. So many campers will give you access to the side of the benches, but not the rear bench unless you disassemble half the dinette. You never have to lift a cushion in a Freedom Express to get to all the storage below the seating. Isn't that cool? And um, this is one of the very few areas uh, where this, you know, the 292 and the 310 Freedom Express are very similar to one another, um, with the 310 basically just having a, uh, a, a second slide out in the bunk area. This is one area where they do vary here. The 292 has a sort of centralized uh, pantry storage combination that, um, you know, is uh, you could use for extra clothing space. Although, if you're paying attention to the background here, in the bunk area, the 292 crushes on storage capacity. This thing is loaded with space. Now, the other thing is loaded with are a lot of windows and they all open for airflow if you want to really get this sucker breathing back here you can and in the liberty edition well, uh, all of your windows are also going to have the nice little uh night roller shades on here but notice how they don't put window treatments back here in the bunkhouse that's not an accident that is by intention so the kids don't bang into them and bust them up and rip them off you know um if you do let the kids there is a uh, uh, ability to add entertainment hookups back here and uh you know you the, you just have all kinds of storage in this bunkhouse it's absolutely awesome and that lower step right there that almost acts like a little shoe or boot garage for the kiddos as well <coughs> pardon me now right next to the bathroom or pardon well yeah next to the bathroom is the bunkhouse but next to the bunkhouse is the bathroom which is what i was going for and a taller uh, camper allows for a taller shower and this is another of my favorite aspects of Freedom Express camping because as a taller person I can actually get into and stand in that shower without needing to put my head in the bubble. Now you can see that they've got a handy little hanging towel rack right here. Um, now in the kitchen we have solid surface counters. Everywhere else you're going to have a, a sealed edged material right here so that uh, if there is any sort of water exposure or a spilled drink or whatever, 
Um, it, it's as close to failure proof as something can get. You're gonna have to really bang it up and screw it up to cause that. And I like the open shelving next to the toilet here, and notice how it cuts away in that little curve. That's so that bigger people like me, who are a little broader in the shoulders or bigger in the belly, in which case I'm a little bit both, I have room to actually sit at the toilet and do my business and not feel like I'm, you know, in like a little like telephone booth. Do they still have telephone booths? Uh, is uh, pay phones a thing? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, porcelain foot flush stool kind of rounds out the, uh, you know, bathroom area here. And that brings us back to the, uh, what? The, yeah, the living room. Uh, I literally couldn't remember the name for living room for a second. I've done too many videos and I'm tired. Privacy, I think, is more important in a bunkhouse than like any other camper type. And those sliding bedroom privacy doors are even more valuable when you have some bonus sleepers here in the living room right next to that bedroom. Now note, we have both a two-person sleeping uh, trifold sleeper sofa and then in, what is it, 88-inch long, extra long U-Dinette over here. And if you're doing the math, to fit both an oversized U-Dinette sleeper and a full trifold sleeper sofa, you have to have an extra long uh, slide out. So that is one of the areas where this is giving us a bigger living room than a lot of other similar layouts. There are some brands that will match what Freedom Express is doing here, but not all of them. So we've got uh, all kinds of sleeping capacity in this thing, uh, and especially if you have a bunch of kids or people who want their own separate sleeping spaces, you can really accommodate that here. Now obviously our TV will spin around uh, to face the bedroom at night, um, but what's also neat is right below that, next to the uh, DVD uh, Bluetooth stereo, you've got a handy little like device charging station. So uh, especially in a bunkhouse that can sleep this many people, chances are you've got just a whole slew of these things laying around and you've got USB chargers scraggled everywhere. That's where having a nice little station like that where you can set up a whole power strip full of chargers is handy. Uh, electric space heating, quote, fireplace, as we call it. Um, but uh, yeah, basically an electric space heater, but it is remote controlled and has LED visuals that are, you know, the LED, if you just want the cool look, that's heatless, but you can also get some bonus heat in here without burning up your propane. By the way, speaking of heating, no heat vents in the floor of a Freedom Express. They use cabinet ducted heating instead like you see right there. It might be slightly less efficient, but this isn't necessarily attempting to be some sort of Four Seasons Arctic camper. If you don't plan on camping when the snowflakes are flying, which most of us don't, you're going to be just fine here. Um, and it will be protected in case of like a dip below zero. A, a quick little dip below zero isn't going to break this camper uh, in, in the slightest. Now, this is taller, taller shower. We've already talked about a couple reasons I like it, but also a longer 80 inch queen bed instead of the short camp queen. I want to specifically make note of that because a lot of people will come into the bedroom here and go, oh crap, the bed goes right up against the wall. I'm going to kick the crap out of the wall and wake everybody up. First of all, when you slide open the pocket doors, you are gaining a couple inches at the foot of the bed. Keep that in mind too. But with the longer bed, you're probably not going to kick the doors even if they were closed. In the Liberty Edition, with that uh, inclusion of that nose cap, you're going to pick up that cool little headboard. And if I get up here a little bit closer, it's hiding a couple neat little things. It has both a set of USB chargers. And have you noticed how all the USB chargers and like LED accent lights, they're all 12 volt powered because I'm not plugged into shore power right now. And then you have this uh, really aggressive uh, blue LED nightlight there. So you have that. Plus, you have these lights right here. You've got all kinds of like night lighting up here in this bedroom. And the new uh, shiplap front, you know, nose accent wall they have going on in here, it, it just it sets everything off. And I think it, it's, it's last year, these were better looking than they'd ever been, and they're better looking still. I do want to point out, you do have side stands with household outlets. Um, we've become kind of used to in upper end laminated trailers like the Freedom Express seeing USB plugs right there and you don't see them on this one. Remember, they are located up in the headboard. They didn't forget them, they just moved them where they're a little easier to reach for mom and dad or grandpa and grandma or whoever. So Freedom Expresses are larger but lighter. A couple ways that go about that. One is heavy use of lamination and aluminum skeleton work. Another one though is Asdell uh, wall panels under your sidewall skin. Um, Asdell, if you're not familiar with it, it is a composite resin material that is significantly lighter than um, a comparable amount of uh, Luon paneling as is normally, and there's nothing wrong with Luon laminated walls, guys. 
Um, Asdel is a material that generally costs a little more, but it's lighter weight. The material can't rot, mold, or mildew. It's basically a hard moisture barrier. Has some other little benefits too, like it's a little bit sound dampening. It's slightly better in terms of heat resistance. And we're gonna talk more about that as we go. But first, this huge 42 cubic foot front pass-through storage includes its own picnic table, sometimes white, sometimes black. And I forgot again, there's full length LED lighting along the front uh, aluminum beam right there. You can kind of see that black strip under it. Just like there's full length LED lighting under the awning. Now Liberty Edition has not just the magnet holdbacks that all Freedom Expresses share, but also the nicer uh, metal slam latches. Not the plastic compression latches, but actual nice metal slam latches. Simple side mount solar here, makes chase in the sun like if you have the camper parked in the shade or something. Or, you know, you're gonna be camping all day out in the open and you know, you, you wanna keep the panel away from the shade of the camper. You can kinda do that too. Now, at the time of this filming, they've uh, the Liberty Editions now have uh, standard the LCI Stable Step, and uh, we'll uh, talk about those a little bit more too. But those are great with those adjustable foot pegs. If you are on a goofy, uneven campsite, it is very handy to have those things because they keep the camper from rocking and rolling around. Those adjustable feet will marry up to basically any campsite. And um, as people come and go, you, the kids, whoever, it keeps the camper body from, from just getting thrown around. Liberty Edition will give us uh, a full nose cap. Now, if you look in the background to the left, you can see a, a Freedom Ultralight versus a Liberty, and that is the standard three-quarter cap there. Now, the 292 we're looking at, it is available either way. So that's why when I go through, I'm really stressing what items are Liberty and what, uh, what items are not, so that uh, if we have a non-Liberty Edition in stock, you understand. Because remember, this might not be the exact one we have in stock, but this is built how we prefer to build them. Liberty Edition has, uh, like you never have to get down on your hands and knees to crank jacks. You can control all that right up here. And I love the just intelligent location of this. It's kind of like, I like Class C motorhomes where your backup camera monitor is actually up where your rear view mirror would be because it looks just like a power tongue jack. And of course it is a big heavy duty front power leveling jack. But then you can manipulate the, all the rest of your jacks right here. So it's actually a seven point stability system, which is pretty darn cool. Freedoms all use 20 pound propane tanks. And it seems like bigger high end campers like this almost always use 30. So it seems odd that a Freedom would use 20s. Very good reason for it though. Remember how I said that this is made by people who actually go camping. So let's say it's Sunday and you run out of propane. What you gonna do? And the answer is, uh, well, with a Freedom Express, you could go to anywhere, a gas station if you had to, and exchange a 20 pound tank. But with 30 pound tanks, you're kinda out of luck until Monday. Maybe you can borrow a tank from the neighbor until then if you have a neighbor you can borrow from. But 20 pound tanks are lighter weight, easier to exchange any time, you know? Um, the spare tires mounted on the tongue of all Freedom Expresses and their sisters, the Apex Ultralights from Coachman we have here at Haylitz. And what's kind of cool about that is it improves load balancing and uh, so that you know it, it's not quite as bouncy jouncy going down the road and it leaves the rear bumper wide open. Now, um, all Freedom Expresses are going to have an enclosed underbelly. Your 292 will always be forced air heated. There's also another thing that you can add to it called the Radiant Barrier Package. What that does is, remember how I said that the Asdel in the sidewalls is a little better in terms of heat resistance? Um, it'll help keep the sun out or in the spring and the fall keep the furnace inside. Asdel will help with efficiency purposes. The other thing that it will uh, that's going on here is the Radiant Barrier Package adds a layer of thermal, uh, uh, basically heat reflection uh, material in the nose, the roof, and the rear wall. So, the, especially the nose and the roof are two massive sun exposure areas. They're the two greatest areas for heat gain and heat loss in a camper. So, uh, it, having that extra barrier there really makes a big difference. Now, again, all windows will open for airflow. All windows are very heavily tinted so that people aren't going to be able to see inside, even without the shades drawn, and it keeps the sun out. Now, you also want to keep the water out, and that's why they use a really rough textured slide wall and this odd little T-shaped wiper seal you don't see used in the business much, but it gives one extra surface to grab that wiper seal against that hard slide wall that, that or that grippy side wall uh, to uh, make sure the wiper seal does its job uh, because you, you sure don't want to have any level of water penetration. Now once again, this is a huge indicator that this was designed by someone that actually goes camping because you have centralized hookups and they're all back here in the back of the camper. It just makes more sense. Uh, this is generally where most parks are going to have their hookups. We have our black tank flush. Um, 
auto ignition, gas and electric fast recharge water heater that'll give us roughly 17.8 gallons of hot water per hour, but <laughs> who's counting anyway? Separate cable and satellite hookups and a full outside utility shower to hose the kiddos off so they're not taking sand and slime and everything else inside the camper. Now, even this uh, like little I guess you call it off door, still has the handy magnet latches here. And in years past before the inclusion of outside kitchens, this actually used to be a full rear pass or a little history lesson for you there, but now it's just an additional extra storage space. Very handy for keeping like your, your a tote with all of your water electric hookups. And by the way, guys, please stop putting fresh water and sewer hoses together in the same tote. I cannot count the number of trade-in campers where somebody hauls a tote around with potable drinking water hoses that they're going to use to provide water to their family and sewer hoses all in the same tube. Do you not understand that that's a sanitary item? I'm not even a germaphobe. It's just not smart to do that. So anyway, I'll get off my, my soapbox here. Backup camera ready. Um, also good for uh, Furion in motion observation models like those we have on the shelf all the time here. So we talked about the upgraded air conditioner. Uh, the ladder we're looking at is also an optional piece of equipment. Makes it easier to get up to that, uh, you know, fully walkable uh, roofing that we're going to actually fully walk on in just a minute here. Uh, the, you know what? Beautiful day. Let's get this awning opened up, shall we? Now, what's kind of cool here is that between the awning and that big, tall outside kitchen door, you've got near max coverage here. Um, it's uh, one of the better parts about having a full-size outside kitchen like this one here in the Freedom Express. Now the 292 and the 310, they're very similar in a lot of ways as we saw inside like the entire like living room and forward, they're identical. Really the only difference is the 310 um, where it's a little bit longer is it has a second slide, one in the bunkhouse and then a direct entry bathroom door. So if you like that 310, but that, you know, 37 foot length and that, that weight of that second slide's a bit much. That's where this guy comes in. Um, now, out here, they do a very good outside kitchenette. Uh, the TV hookups above your uh, little sink area are a nice little touch. Very handy if you are interested in outside entertainment. It's convenient to just be able to leave it hooked up and outside. Now, it's kind of funny if you look really closely. This is actually just a window valence that they flipped upside down. It, it, when, I, when you say it out loud, it sounds kind of janky. But the fact is, it looks good, and it matches the decor of the RV, and it's perfectly functional. So, <laughs> what's the harm? Plus, it's metallic, so it's actually really good material to have outside. Little details, I mean, we've talked a bunch about storage already, but having the, uh, you know, extra storage cabinet right out here is very, very useful. Now, coming down below, we've got a full tile backsplash, and we do have that power outlet right there. Whether you're going to be charging phones or, you know, making a little margarita station, whatever kind of works for you, she's going to take care of you. More of the sealed edge countertops and a real sink with a real drain into a holding tank, not uh, the dog dish that you flip out on the park and make the seasonal lady scream at you who's camping next door because, oh, she's got nothing to do but look through those shades and watch you, am I right? Um, you notice they lowered this refrigerator right here so that it's a lot easier for the kiddos to get to. So what you do is you put the bug juices down here and you put the daddy juices and mommy juices up here. You know, the barley pops and the bottled water and you get the idea. Another of the sink utensil drawers with those removable little inserts right here and a portable Coleman Camp Grill. Now what's cool about these, compared to the um, common little black RVQ grills that you get, this is a higher output, meaning it's more wind resistant, and then you're not tied to the camper with it. You can take it anywhere you want. Now, in a lot of Freedom Express RVs, you see where that drawer is located. Usually that's where this little Coleman grill is going to be, but since we have a full outside camp kitchen, they didn't need to do that. So they said, well, we've already got the space allowance for it. Let's just throw a drawer there because, you know, we're coachmen and we do storage, man. Wide stance stability axles, with those beautiful aluminum wheels. No one ever cries about those, Argentina. Uh, the aluminum wheels, though, the idea behind them is they look good. They also do disperse heat a little better. I don't talk about that very often versus steel wheels. So if you are going up and down hills and you have to really grind those brakes like you live in the Smokies or the Appalachians or whatever, um, they will tend to bleed heat off the brakes a little bit faster instead of holding heat themselves. But you see how they're spread apart. That spread axle design, what it's going to do if we look down the length of the trailer is it will help the trailer not porpoise so much and it'll help the trailer not snake and sway so much. So no por less porpoise, less snake. More freedom, baby, yeah. 
<laughs> and we we saw these earlier, but a quick pass again past those Moride stable steps. One of the neat things about these right here is with that wider top step, you can really just kind of use that like a bonus seat. Now you see down here, you've got full length LED lighting and that white underside of that awning um, during the uh, the evening hours, it'll really cast a lot of light down here against the uh, you know primary campsite area. And with that, let's hop upstairs. So there was a trend for a while where a lot of brands were using color keyed roofing where the roof membrane would try to be like uh, the same color as the sidewall. The hiccup with that is the darker roof skins generate a lot more heat than the white roof membrane that we're looking at currently. So Freedom Express actually went back away from that, kind of like they used to have a brown front wall. Um, beyond that, there's not a whole lot else I want to talk about up here. It's just good, simple, clean execution, a full walk-on roof here. Obviously, I'm just trouncing all over this thing. But uh, they put a new antenna on these, the uh, 360 WineGuard antenna. You do not have to like make multiple channel scans. You don't have to crank it up and down. You don't have to turn it. Get to your campsite. If you're going to use the over-the-air um, you know, signal, you do one scan and done. One and done. And that's the convenience and ease that Freedom Express gets. And these are, you know, a handful of the ones that just arrived today. If uh, you're kind of curious as to how much confidence we have in a product, we go deep with this, guys. This is a serious part of our ultralight lineup. And actually, the last three years in a row, in their class and category, meaning deep slide ultralights, Freedom Express has been the single most successful thing that we have here at Halid RV compared to all these other different trailers and brands you're looking at. They are one of the very best at what they do. But as I said, every camper, I really feel, is the best in a different way. They all have their one thing that they do better than anybody else. So the question is, is that the one thing that you're looking for? And I can't answer that, but I can give you a video so that you can help decide that for yourself. And if you need a little more assistance, you give our team here at Halid RV a call. Uh, because we don't do hidden dealer fees, but we do everything else, like hitching, pieces, parts, trades, financing, truck and trailer package deals, RV delivery, and everything in between. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.